So after having done ordinary points, we're going to look at singular points, and it turns out that we can still categorize singular points um, to a couple of different categories. <clears throat> well, let's first talk about what, a, what an ordinary point is and a singular point is, and then we'll categorize it. So we start off with a differential equation, a second order differential equation, and we will divide out that first function next to the y double prime, and then we're going to come up with two new functions, p and q, or capital P and capital Q, because we're going to use lowercase p and lowercase q later. But the uppercase p and q are the functions that we want to look at. And identify whether they're analytic or not analytic. So if uh, the functions p and q are analytic, then we call that an ordinary point. That was defined last time uh, and also defined last time as a singular point, but let's talk more about singular points. So if, uh, if, uh, if x naught is not defined at p or q, like we have an x minus x naught in the denominator or something like that, then that's called a singular point. So it turns out that there's a, a, a way to categorize singular points, and we have a singular point. It's called a regular singular point. If you can kind of take away the the whole, how's it called? the whole. Um, in calculus, they call it something. It's something about continuity and making, making it removable. Yeah, it's a removable discontinuity. So a removable discontinuity is basically something where uh, it, if you were to graph this, this graph, and uh, this graph would just be, would look just like a regular graph, except there would be a hole at that one point. And a removable discontinuity says that we can just define one point on this function, and then now you'll have a continuous graph. So that's different from like the 1 over x, where it goes off to infinity. That's not a removable discontinuity. So if we're talking about removable discontinuities, um, where that's more or less a singular point, but it's it's a little bit it's a little bit of uh, more detailed in the definition, but uh, there is a quick and simple way to look at it, and we'll see some examples. We'll see it. So it says here a regular singular point uh, of a differential equation if the function little p, now this little p is different from capital P, if little p uh, is, uh, if it's like taking capital P and just multiplying it by x minus x naught, and then all of a sudden it becomes analytic. And we take uh, capital Q, and we multiply that by x minus x naught squared, and then it becomes analytic. So that just means that your, your function capital P might have a uh, divided by x minus 2, so that if you multiply that whole thing by x minus 2, it would cancel out the x minus 2, and then it would become analytic. So that's what that's saying. A uh, singular point is not regular. Uh, if it's singular point, point's not regular, then it's called irregular. And we won't deal with that because that's too much to deal with. Yeah. For this, uh, the way this is defined, yeah. So you can think about singular points for third order differential equations uh, kind of similarly. But we're just, we're just going to deal with second order. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the big theorem that we're going to use. We're not going to prove it, but uh, we're going to use this theorem called Frobenius.
So I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff at you and then just do some examples. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work out. So Frobenius uh, theorem says that if we have a regular singular point uh, in our differential equation, then we can find a power series solution around that regular singular point. But the power series solution is not really quite a power series solution. It's uh, a power series times another x minus x naught raised to the r, r power, whatever r is. And that's r, that r is something that we're going to have to try to look for. So we have to understand that this is not a power series, a regular power series as we know of. Uh, r can be, what if r was a negative number, and then so this power series is not really defined as a regular power series. If r was a, a, a fraction, a non-integer, then this can't be really defined as a power series. So uh, what we're doing is we're trying to find something that kind of looks almost like a power series. It ha kind of has that form, but technically it's not a power series. And so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on uh, our series, um, C sub n times x minus x naught raised to the n plus r. So we'll add on an extra factor of x minus x naught to the r power. So r is some constant that we don't know of yet. But instead of the way they did it in the book, they, they kind of went over and did an example, and then they defined this new thing. We'll just go off and define these, uh, this equation that we're going to use to help us find our solution. Okay. All right. So this is a Frobenius. This is a theorem that we're going to use. And then instead of trying to squeeze things down here, I'll start off another page. So R is an important um, important number for us that we need to get. So we'll try to get that in the front end of our problem, solving our problem. And then we'll see if we can build on this on this series that we're looking for. No, the R R could be anything. Um, no. Initial? Huh. Initial, yeah. So finding this R value requires a simple calculation. Well, huh. it's, it's really just another second order polynomial or second degree polynomial. So it's finding that polynomial is a tricky part. So uh, initial equation is based on, oh, and, and I'm sorry, we're shifting to, quickly shifting to x naught is equal to zero here. Because whatever problem we have, if we have x naught to be something different, we'll just shift it, and then your solution will just be shifted. So x naught is equal to zero. All right, so instead of saying x minus x naught times p of x and stuff like that, we'll just say x. So the initial equation is going to be based on the p function, the capital P function, and the capital Q function. So what we want to do with that is we want to multiply the capital P function with x. And we'll see on and on that we're going to continue to call that little p. And uh, find the power series for that. And then we'll take the Q function and multiply that by X squared. And then find the power series for that. Well, we don't really need to find the whole power series. All we're concerned about are the constant terms of those two new power series that we're finding. And we'll call that A naught and B naught. 
And the initial equation that we're looking for is this equation r times r minus 1 plus a naught times r plus b naught, which is, again, a second degree polynomial. So we can easily solve for that using quadratic equation or whatever. Oh, and we're not going to be showing the proof of Frobenius. Frobenius. So yeah, we're looking for R. And then based on what R is, uh, then we can anticipate what kind of solutions we're going to get. I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's, let's Google it, initial. I think it means characteristic. Behavior, initial of personality. Resembling an index or an index finger. Anyway. <laughs> so, initial equation. So uh, now, usually when we have a second degree polynomial and we say, oh, it's, it's either you got one, uh, two distinct real roots and one real root uh, repeated and then complex roots. So for these initial equations, we're not, going to take a look at those cases. We have a different set of cases to look at. So the three cases we will consider, kind of weird, is that case one, uh, we're going to deal with two distinct roots, but the difference between the two distinct roots is not an integer, which means one of them can be one, the other one can be 2.5, something like that. So if you take the difference, you get some sort of fraction. So in that first case, you will have two solutions, and your solutions will be based on those two R values that you found, R1 and R2. Too small? Is it too small, Josh? Somebody else is squinting. So. Are you wearing glasses already? That's too big. So, um, in that case, your solution would look like this. So this looks like the kind of solution that we like, right? This is this is a nice solution. You got R's, and you just put those values in. You find the series, and then that's it. Not, not a big deal. By the way, your series solution will be of this form, and you still have to look for it, solve for it like the way you would solve for it using the power series that we've been using. And so we'll do one of these examples today for sure. Um, the second case is that you still have two distinct solutions, but then when you subtract them, the difference is going to be a whole number, an integer. So that case already becomes a lot more complicated because it says that the solution would be um, would be y1 is equal to like the first solution of the first case, but y2 gets a little bit more complicated. Y2 will actually include Y1 and then have its own series. <clears throat> okay. So this will take a little bit longer to do, and I will we'll start one of these problems and we'll see if we can get it done before the end of class. Okay.
Yeah, but the formal definition of the power series of powers are integer, positive integers at that. Yeah. Mm, not around zero because it's not defined at zero. Yeah. Right at that center point. <laughs> Sorry. Hung me first, then we'll get to you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Have to be? Yeah, let's say yes on that one. Actually, I'm not sure. So. <laughs> Dale. Yeah? Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> I, um, I don't know. <laughs> like 30? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, then I don't know if that's going to happen, but we don't have cases for that. So in this case, we can't use Frobenius theorem if that's if that's what happens. I haven't checked, but I don't know if you can ever because of the way the initial equation structured, you might not. I don't know if you'd be able to get complex numbers. I'll I'll take a look at that. Later. Yeah, but it's not it's not like that. This is we're talking about power series and the R is the power for that series, which isn't really a power series. So it's it's different from saying it's e to the R X because it's not of that form. No, that's that's different because this is these are powers. The R is a part of a power. And it's, there's no exponential here. And oh, yeah, that's what they had in the, if you take a look at the previous page, that's how, the Frobenius theorem. That's, that's, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. All right, so the third case is probably something that we won't be able to cover. Um, definitely not today, but I don't know if we'll ever do this. But if you have uh, R that are equal, then there's going to be two linearly independent solutions. And the first one looks like uh, the regular one, and the second one looks like uh, the first one multiplied with ln x, and then, and then you have to find a series solution for that. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. Right, so the homework that's due this Sunday was just everything that we've done up to 6.2. So we have time to think about it. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh, Let's see if we can do an example. Just so we can get, kind of get the feel for how to, how to deal with these equations. All right, so let's first establish that we can't do this using any of the techniques that we've had before. Uh, this is not constant coefficients, so we can't use that e to the. This is uh, not quite Cauchy Euler equation because there's a. This is not an x squared. 
uh, as you might expect it to be. Uh, so um, doesn't look like it'll be one of those types of equations. So uh, let's let's see if we can find a power series uh, solution for this. And before we think about uh, power series solutions, let's let's make it in the normal form where uh, we divide out by a, a, a 6x. So let's rewrite this as uh, y double prime minus 1 over 6x y prime plus 1 over x times y is equal to 0. So by doing it this way, we can identify the two different functions that we're going to be dealing with. And I'll try to be consistent with their notation. They use uh, capital P for 1 over negative 1 over 6x and then capital Q as 1 over x. So clearly we have some issues with x is equal to 0, which is what we want the, our, our center point to be. We have issues with x is equal to 0 for these two functions. So it's not analytic at 0. Um, so it's not an ordinary point. Uh, let's see if it's a regular point. And to check if it's a regular point, we have little p, and then we'll multiply it by x minus x naught, or x minus 0, or just x times p of x. And we get 1 over 6 negative. And so now it's constant. No issues at 0. This is analytic. Josh. Analytic or ordinary? No, no, ordinary is, is analytic. So if it's it's either ordinary point or it's a regular point. If it's an ordinary point, then we're back at six point two, and we would just solve for it regularly, ordinarily. Singular. So this is singular. Uh, our conclusion here at this point is that our DE of uh, x is equal to 0 is a singular point. Because it's not ordinary. Or more like not analytic. At that point, yeah. Yes, yes. Look at the an analytic. You, you have to look at the little lowercase functions. Yeah. So little p becomes 1 over 6, which is a constant, which is analytic, which is great. So now little q is going to be x squared times capital Q, which is going to be equal to uh, x, which is also analytic. So it's analytic. They became analytic when we multiply it by x and x squared. And so our conclusion here, therefore, I don't, I don't usually do therefore. There you go. Therefore, um, x equals zero is a regular singular point. Um, I think it's right here, right? 
So I think we want to multiply the p by just x and then the q by x squared. Yes, yes. So it would be irregular. Okay, so these side marks over here kind of work on the definition of what it means to be ordinary, regular, uh, regular, singular, or I'm sorry, ordinary or singular, and then regular, singular, or in this, we don't have an example, but uh, an irregular means if we multiply this p by x and multiply the q by x and it's still not analytic or multiply the q by x squared and it's still not analytic then it's an irregular singular point. So we have a regular singular point at x is equal to zero so this will fit in our Frobenius theorem. We can use it. All right. <clears throat> Let's go to the initial equation. So the initial equation has this A naught and B naught that we have to identify. So what we want to do is we want to look at our little p And then pretend like you're expanding it into a power series. And then we look at our little q and pretend we're expanding it as a power series again. So notice I put the x further over here because there's a constant term before that. And then we have linear terms. And then we have the other higher order terms. So this is where we pick out our A naught and B naught. Okay. So the equation is uh, r times r, what is it, r times r minus 1? So let's put in those values. Um, we have r, r minus 1, minus 1 sixth r, plus 0. <clears throat> And then we can go ahead and uh, multiply it out, I guess. R squared minus R minus one sixth R is equal to zero. R squared minus seven sixths R. Okay, yes. No. <laughs> Why did they? No, no. Yeah, we just need to identify the constant terms. And so, I mean, clearly this is not constant, so you can just assume the constant term is zero, and this is just, this is a constant, so that you'll use that one. So, yeah, you don't, you don't really need to. So what do we have? We have um, two distinct real roots. And if we subtract them, the difference is not an integer. 
So I think we're in the first case where our solutions would look like um, whatever they look like. So solutions. of the form and this is a second order so we were we'd be looking for two of them and goes from zero to infinity uh, c sub n x to the n plus or minus Oh, zero. It's zero anyway. So that's just going to be a regular power series in the second one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if they're distinct, then yeah, you subtract them and you see, is it a whole number or is it not a whole number? No, you would use the first case because the difference is not is not one. So let's say my R, my first R was one six and my second R was seven six. If I subtract them, the difference is one. So now, I have to use the second case. Yes, so uh, R1 minus R2 is not a whole number or integer. I'm assuming we're subtracting the positive minus negative, but I just say integer. Okay. Whew. All right, let's find uh, Y1. So we're going to assume that Y1 is of this form, N is equal to 0 to infinity of C sub N, X to the N. That's just like the regular power series that we've been working with, right? And then we want to put it into this uh, differential equation, which means we need two derivatives. Oops, we say y is equal to y prime is equal to start with 1, c sub n times c sub n. Uh, x to the n minus 1. And then y double prime is going to start with 2. Uh, n, n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2. And we'll put that into this equation. Uh, we have 6x times the second derivative. Minus the first derivative. plus 6 times the original function is equal to 0 based on our equation. And then we solve. So this gives us a little bit more practice of what we were doing last time with shifting indices and stuff like that. So let's multiply things out. Um, I'm going to take that 6 all the way in. 6n, uh, n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus, n minus 2 times another x it just becomes n minus 1. You add the powers. And then you have a minus. Uh, n goes from 1 to infinity, and c sub n, x to the n minus, this should be 1, right? And 
and minus 1 plus 6 and goes from 0 to infinity c sub n x of the n and make sure my n doesn't look like an r <laughs> all right <clears throat> now we want to get these powers to x to the n so we'll do some shifting are you guys getting have you guys been working on this? Are you guys okay with changing it to K or leaving it as N? Doesn't matter. I'll change it into K. Yeah. So the first one is not going to change because it's already X to the N power. Or not the first one, the last one, sorry. Uh, the other two, I have to add one to the index. So, working backwards here. Um, so, instead of uh, an x to the n minus 1, I'll have x to the k. I added one, so I'll have to add one to everything else here. c sub k plus 1, k plus 1. And if I added one to the index, I subtract one to the starting point. So, instead of starting at 1, I start with 0. Now the last one, again, I want my n to be n to the k, so it looks like I'll just add 1, c sub k plus 1, n plus 1, n minus 1 plus 1 is just n, changes to k, k plus 1, and so 6 is already there. All right, there we go. Uh, oh, starting point. This started with two. I added one inside, so I have to subtract one from two, and so now I start with one. So now all the x's are the same power. And now I my indices are not, so I look at the largest index starting at one, so I have a couple of indices here to start with zero. I'll take away those zero terms. So I'll keep this one the same. K goes from 1 to infinity of 6, K plus 1, K, C, K plus 1, X to the K. Now for the second one, second series, I'm going to take out the K is equal to 0 term. So K is equal to 0, I'll have 1. I'll put everything, all the pieces here, 1 c to the 0 plus 1, x to the 0 power. So that's the k equals 0 term, which means if I took out the k equals 0 term, my series now begins at 1. Everything else will remain the same. And then the last term, Again, starts with zero, so I want to take away the k is equal to zero term. So I have a c sub zero x to the zero power, and then a six. And then everything else will be the same, except I'll start with one. So I want to take those constants out, not out, but just I'm just shuffling things around and I'll put them first. 6 c sub 0 minus 1 c sub 1. Yeah, x, x sub 0 is 1. I guess I. It, it, yeah, if it's if it's a zeroth term, you know it's constant when I say zeroth term in quotes. And so <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's let's finish it before we start freaking out.
So the rest of the the rest of the series here we could put together Well the homework's a homework. You guys got I was gonna say unlimited time. Unlimited. We'll see what happens. Okay. It's not final time yet, so let's not start tripping. Uh, let's see, we have, uh, I'll put this in big brackets, 6, k plus 1 times k, c sub k plus 1, x to the k will go out. The second one is a minus, k plus 1, c sub k plus 1, uh, and then we have one more term here, plus 6, c sub k, all this is x to the k. So now I kind of want to match up uh, the k's, the ones with the k's. I have a uh, 6k plus 1 plus k. Uh, I can combine these two. 6k plus 1 times k minus k plus 1. C to the k plus 1. <laughs> I, I I tried to I tried to tell you guys in the beginning that this is going to be a little bit more difficult than last time. So, and and your solution will probably take two, maybe three pages, so <laughs> Now <laughs> Yeah, just three pages, that's all. Just chill out. Take a breath. Oh, it's one's four twenty. Oh. Yeah, we still have to find it. All right. Let's see. Um, I suppose we can factor out a k plus one here. I got six k minus one. I don't know if this is gonna help. <clears throat> But in any case, we have a plus six. So let's let's rewrite everything over again. I'm writing smaller. Did you notice? Uh, we have six c sub zero minus c sub one plus some k goes from one to infinity. Let's see if this looks a little nicer. Six uh, k minus one k plus one c sub k plus one plus 6c sub k. And this is where we're going to find the relationship between the c's uh, and then x to the k is equal to zero. Okay. So now, um, yeah, let's try to find some patterns here. Uh, let us take a look at, uh, well, let's write our solution for the constant term first. So c sub 0 or c sub 1 is uh, what you generally want to solve for. This is equal to 0, by the way. 6 c sub 0 minus c sub 1 is equal to 0. So c sub 1 is equal to positive c, 6 c sub 0. And then we'll write out this in general terms. Um, c sub k plus 1 uh, is equal to negative 6 c sub k divided by uh, 6k minus 1 k plus 1 and this will be good for uh, all values of k integer values of k bigger than 1 bigger than or equal to 1 so we'll find k is equal to 1 2 3 4 and see if we can find a pattern All right, uh, k is equal to 1. We have um, c sub 2 is equal to uh, minus 6 c sub 1 divided by, yeah. Oh, so I took, I took this, this thing in here, set it equal to 0, and I solved for c sub k plus 1. I'll just... 
Uh, well, no, we know k, what k values are appropriate because of the series. One, two, three. So we know that we start with one. Uh, but I'm doing this so that I, when I, I want it easier to plug in k. When I plug in the k, I'll just figure out what the values are. I mean, I could plug in the k here one by one. That means I have to solve every time. Yeah. I mean, this is already tedious. <laughs> Let's not make it even more tedious, right? Uh, okay, so k is equal to 1. We got 6 minus 1 is 5, and then uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. Oh, wait, c sub 1 is equal to 6 c sub 0. So minus 6, 6 c sub 0. My c's are starting to look like 6s here. Uh, 5 times 2. Uh, so minus 6 squared c sub 0, 5 times 2. And I'm not multiplying 5 times 2 on purpose because I want to take a look to see if I can find a pattern. k is equal to 2. c sub 3 is equal to minus 6 c sub 2 divided by, so I have uh, k is equal to 2. So that's 12 minus 1, 11. And uh, 3. So what does c sub 2 equal to? Uh, I got minus 6, 11 times 3. And c sub 2 is equal to minus 6 squared c sub 0, 5 times 2. So I have a uh, minus and a minus. So that's a positive. I have a 6 to the third power. I have 11 times 5. Those two numbers kind of came from uh, the 6k minus 1. Uh, and then I have a 3 times 2, which is probably going to end up being a factorial. Let's do one more. You guys are getting bored. So... When k is equal to 3, 6 times 3 is 18, minus 1 is 17. Is that right? And then 4, uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. So that's minus 6, 17 times 4. And then c sub 4, or c sub 3, is uh, this business over here. 6 to the third, 11 times 5 times 3 times 2 c sub 0. So I think it looks like we're going to have uh, an alternating series, uh, 6 to the fourth power. So it looks like we have powers of 6 happening. Uh, this is the only one that's kind of hard to describe, but you know it's described by 6k minus 1. Uh, 17 times 11 times 5. And then after that, we have 4 times 3 times 2. So we got some sort of pattern here um, for the, our c sub k values. <clears throat> All right, let's try to write it down here. Off to the side. Because I'm out of room. Uh, y sub 1. It's going to equal to uh, c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times x. Well, c sub 1 is, uh, should I put c sub 1 times x? So this is our general pattern for our series. So c sub 0 plus 6 c sub 0 uh, and then 2 c sub oh, times x. And then c sub 2 is equal to minus uh, 6 squared over 5 times 2 c sub 0 times x squared. C sub 3 is uh, x, uh, 6 to the third power 
over 11 times 5 times 3 factorial x to the third power. And then the fourth one is 6 to the fourth power, or times c, sub 0. So they basically all have a c sub 0. Um, 6 to the fourth, and then you got this weird 17 times 11 times 5. And then you got a 4 factorial, c sub 0, and then x to the 4th. So you can see that they all have c sub 0, so you can factor that out, and that's your arbitrary constant number 1. OK. Uh, generally, they would ask for like, what's your first four or five non-zero terms or something. Uh, you can try to write it as series, but the series kind of begins with, uh, with starts right here. I guess I should have put the, your series kind of starts right here. So. That's when you can write the summation symbol. All right. So that's Y1. That's the easy half of the problem. <laughs> I had nothing else to do. All right, let's uh, continue. Oops. All right, so this is our differential equation, our second function. should be of the form uh, c sub n times x to the n plus 7 sixth. Oh, uh, because they're used to using C's instead of changing it to B's. It'll, it's different. It's, it's, no, 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 no. So when you set up your, your second series solution, it's going to be different from, um, the, the constants, although they say C sub N, it's not the same C sub N as the other one. So like C sub n for the first one is like a local variable over there and it's computer science stuff. All right. So we need two derivatives. Whew. Oh, whatever. It's that. That's the case. Again, you just shift it and you just make it go back down to zero. It's because uh, x minus x naught is really just a, if the graph is just shifted. So we can always shift it to zero. So when we're Taking derivatives, we have to be careful, right? Because the power is uh, n plus 7, 6. So we have n plus 7, 6 times x to the n plus 7, 6 minus 1. And so we have to make sure we do our subtractions properly. It's like taking derivatives of 
fraction powers and stuff like we had that issue in calculus. Yeah. But then k minus one k. Uh, but then you also need the n, the seven sixth around here. So it's not just doesn't just belong to the power. All right. <clears throat> n goes from two to infinity. Five, six. All right, let's put it in. Um, you got six X and goes from two to infinity. N plus seven six N plus one six X to the N minus five six uh, minus N goes from one to infinity N plus seven six C sub N X to the N plus one six plus six times and goes from zero to infinity, C sub n, x to the n plus seven six. It's basically the same kind of work that we we did and have been doing. <clears throat> so we multiply this by an x, uh, by six x, so the x will go up by one, so that'll climb back up to n minus one sixth and plus seven six and plus one six x to the n plus one six And then, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Lost it right here. Thanks. All right, we add one. We want to go to seven six. Yeah, so we're essentially mimicking the same thing that we did before. Uh, we'll have uh, we add one, so we subtract one to the, oh, we're changing the indices. Uh, we add one to everything in here. This becomes uh, k plus uh, seven, six plus one, 13, six, n plus seven, six, c sub n, x to the n plus seven, six. This one adds one, so we'll go from zero. K goes from zero. We add one in here, 13, six again. C sub O, K plus one. Oh boy. Sorry.
um, plus six. I think that's just C sub K. <clears throat> so it looks like we're doing kind of like the same amount of work. So I think um, by Ray's suggestion about just in the beginning, just letting of another variable, I don't know if I want to let K equal to that, but if you let M or some other variable equal to uh, N plus seven, six, and then before you start solving for it, change it. So we're here, we're going to take out a k is equal to zero term, and the k is equal to zero term here. And then let's go ahead and put all that k is equal to zero term out in front. Should we do that, or is that going to get too confusing? No, let's just keep it like this. So this is where, I think when you start taking terms out, this is where it's important to have these fractions here. So k equals 1 to infinity k plus 13, 6, k plus 7, 6, c sub k plus 1, x to the k plus 7, 6. And in here, I'll take out a k is equal to 0. I get a 13, 6, c sub 1, x to the 7, 6 power. So I took out the k is equal to 0 term, so I start off with k is equal to 1, k plus 13, 6, c sub k plus 1, x to the k plus 7, 6. And then I get to take out another term here, k is equal to 0, so that's going to be a 6 times uh, c sub 0, x to the 0 plus 7, 6 power. equals zero. So the constant terms would get taken out. Six C sub zero X to the seven six minus thirteen six C sub one X to the seven six. plus the rest, k plus 13, 6, k plus 7, 6, c sub k plus 1, minus k plus 13, 6, c sub k plus 1, plus 6, C sub K X to the K plus seven six. So because this is all equal to zero, all these coefficients would be equal to zero. So we can ignore the X's, we can factor out the X's and just focus on the coefficients. So we have six c sub 0 minus 13, 6 c sub 1 is equal to 0, and then again c sub 1 is equal to, bring that over, multiply by reciprocal, uh, 6 squared over 13. Yeah. And then this thing, C, C sub K plus 1 is going to equal to uh, negative 6 C sub K divided by this bigger mess over here. So 
I'll keep it separate this time. Uh, K plus 13, 6. K plus 7, 6. Minus K plus 13, 6. Might be easier to factor, yeah. Oh, so I, I took it from here and I factored out a C, C sub K plus one. And then, uh, but I think it might have been better. Instead of having terms like this, it might be better if you just factor and multiply things out. So what I mean by that is maybe I will should have done what I did last time is to factor out a K plus 13, K plus 13 over 6. And then I have a K plus 7, 6 minus 1. So that's 1, 6. So we'll find a relationship. K goes uh, from one to infinity with this pattern. So let's see what happens when we put K is equal to one in here. A negative six C sub one divided by, put one in there, 13, 13, 19. Put one, seven, six. And C sub 1 is 6 squared over 13 times C sub 0. So this is negative 6 to the third over 19, 6 times. 7, 6 times 13, C sub 0. I suppose we can bring the 6s up in the numerator. Minus 6 to the 5th over 19 times 13 times 7, C sub 0. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, K is equal to two. We have a uh, minus six C sub two divided by, so this is two, 12, that's 25 over six times, this is two, 12, 13 over six. <sighs> So C sub 2, I suppose we can write this as 6 to the third, uh, 25 and 13, C sub 2. So that's minus 6 to the third, 25 times 13 times C sub 2 is mi minus 6 to the fifth, 19 plus 13 plus 7. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, positive 6 to the 8th power, 25 times 13 squared, or times 19. I'm trying to find a pattern here. Oh, it should be a times times. Uh, I don't know. Well, you get the picture? So I think this is one of your homework problems. Uh, I don't know if your homework problems will have a six here. Your homework problem might have a different number there 
in which case your solutions to your initial equations might be a little bit different. But this is the case where the, you have two distinct roots. Uh, the difference is not a real number, a whole number, I mean. Uh, the second case is, is becomes a little bit more interesting. And so maybe I'll just make a video of it and not go over it in class. But you still might be responsible for it, like, you know, test level responsible. Yes, that's our only exam left. Well, not if I specifically tell you to solve using series. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good weekend. <laughs> oh, exam. What? You really?